Hello guys, my name is Daniel. I'm a landscape photographer based in Bavaria, Germany. I would like to welcome you to my first image editing tutorial. I got many requests lately for such a video, so I finally decided to make one. In this video I will show you my whole process from start to finish. I'm working with the programs Adobe Lightroom CC, Adobe Photoshop CC and also some filters of the Nick collection by Google. Since English is not my native language, I hope everybody will understand me fine. I will try to speak as clear as possible. I will guide you through all my techniques I'm using step by step. The tutorial will be based on the image you can see here. It's one of my favorite ones. I took it last year in January at the beautiful lake called Hintersee in the German Alps. It was a really cold winter evening when I arrived there and I was actually quite disappointed because the whole place was covered in clouds and I couldn't see anything and I uh, yeah, wanted to leave again. But suddenly the clouds opened up a gap and I yeah, when I saw that I was running along the shoreline to get to the place here and yeah, when I stood there it was amazing because suddenly I could saw the mountain with some soft evening light on it and yeah, I was really happy about that. And um, this image is a panorama. I made it out of six vertical shots and in the first chapter here I will show you how I process these raw files. I prepare them for Photoshop. I will show you my first steps I'm making here. And in the other chapters then I will show you how I make further adjustments. First of all how I merge the image in, in, in Photoshop to a whole panorama. And then I will show you all my contrast adjustments, color adjustments and so on. Uh, the video will be, or the, the video will have seven chapters but now we're in the first one and like i said here i want to show you my first steps in lightroom and that's what i will do now so let's let's just get started to do this i will first pick the six raw files because here you can see the final image because of course of course we have to get there so um i will use this here yep and I will mark all six with control so I can synchronize them so I don't have to make the adjustments to all images or to every single image. Uh, no, I don't need this. And uh, yeah, here's the first one already. And when I go to the develop module with D, here you can see all the options I can do. And the first thing is, I always check the histogram at the beginning. I of course do this in the field already, but uh, I will do it in post again. And here you can see the image is a little bit too dark. Because on the left side you have the dark tones and on the right side you have the bright tones. But this was on purpose, since there were many clouds with some light spots where the sun was shining through or the evening light came through, it was a really contrasty scene. And uh, yeah, it was hard to capture the whole information in one in one frame. And I, I didn't want to break it, so I have to underexpose the image a bit. But I used a Nikon D610 and the sensor from this camera is really amazing. So it helped me a lot to capture the information. It has a really high dynamic range. So in this case, it's no problem when I slightly underexpose because I can always bring the shadows back in, in post process. Uh, post processing here. If you use another camera, something like Canon or so on, you maybe have to use a graduated filter or uh, you have to bracket. But in this case, I didn't. So I will show you my workflow based on a single exposure. The first thing I always do is I go to the camera calibration section. And there I check the profiles. I have three favorite ones. It's Adobe Standard, Camera Neutral and 
camera standard and I mostly use camera neutral because it has the best effect for me. When I click on it, I will show you what I mean. Here you see it reduces the overall contrast. When you check the histogram now, I still have a lot of dark tones, but there aren't any um, lost informations anymore because I have no blinkies here. And the colors are a little bit softer also. I like this effect and that's what I use most of the time. I, like I said, I have three ones because sometimes I use the other ones also. Just out of interest, I will click on camera standard also and I see no, it's too dark, I don't like it, so I stick with camera neutral. Perfect. And what I also like to do here in the camera calibration section is I work with the saturation and the blue tones because I don't like the vibrance and saturation slider that much. So uh, I uh, increase my color down here. And since I like colorful images, I yeah, always give it a try and bump it up a bit. So let's start with something in the 50s. And there you see it increases the blue tones nicely. Not too strong, but it makes the image a little bit cooler. And that's what I want. Since it was a really cold evening, I want to enhance the mood in this image. And like I said, Lightroom, Lightroom is just a starting point. I will do this later on in Photoshop even more, but it's good to get some, yeah, good beginning. I can always readjust it later if I want to have more color or if I want to dial it back a bit, but something in the 50s now is fine for me. It also works with non-blue images, of course, when you have some sunrise or something, it also increases the colors really nice. Just give it a try. Okay. The next thing is I will go to the basic tab and first of all I will increase the shadows because like I said it's too dark. Something in the 60s maybe and when I zoom in you see there's almost no noise. The Nikon sensor is really good in that case. You see it perfect. Then I will increase the overall exposure because it's a little bit too dark but like I said it was on purpose. You know, something like this. And then I will go down with the highlights again because I want to get back detail here in the clouds. Something around here. Depends on the image, of course. In this case, it helps. Uh, okay. Looks good. Then I will bump up clarity a bit. It brings in some mid-tone contrast and also makes the image look a little bit crisper but I don't want to overdo it because when I do too much you see it starts to look really crunchy and I don't want that. I want to keep the soft mood because of the low clouds and misty misty kind of feeling, misty air. So I yeah, will stick somewhere close to 10. I always use only 10 to 20, not much more. Yeah, vibrance and saturation I will leave in peace. Then I can go up with the contrast a bit if I want, the overall contrast. I don't do it too much because I'm always watching for the histogram. I like to keep some space on the left and on the right side. The image will look a little bit flat then, but that's okay because I will make the final contrast adjustments in Photoshop and I don't want to um, overdo it in Lightroom already. So I keep the informations on the left and on the right. Okay. And now I will work with the temperature because I want to cool and down the image a bit. Since it was a really cold evening, I want to enhance that mood. Something around here. And I also will bring in some magenta because I like how it works together with blue tones. Yep, that's good. Perfect. I like this mood now. The next thing is I will use a graduated filter. I want to bring in some brightness in the reflection and also darken down the foreground a bit. So first of all, I will yeah, increase the whites and then I will drag the filter here. I always start somewhere here in the middle because then I see 100% of the effect down here. When I start at the bottom, I never see 100% of the effect because it starts to uh, soften out already because I don't want it. So I will start somewhere here and then I can always, oops, and then I can always readjust it if I want. I don't want it to have it. I want. I don't want it in the mountain just here. So I will go a bit down here and somewhere here. Okay. And then I will lower the exposure because, like I said, I want to darken down the foreground. 
because in my opinion reflections should always be darker than the subject they're reflecting otherwise it will look unrealistic and when you have a darker foreground than the background especially with reflections like i said it uh, you will get a uh, more dimension in the image since the sky is usually always brighter than the foreground and it was already shadow there were a lot of shadows here so i want to keep that also go up with the shadows just a bit so it doesn't get too dark because of this adjustment okay when i turn it on and off you see slight but it's a difference maybe i want to get back some brightness yeah something like that you have to play yourself until you like it okay that looks good then i will close this here maybe oh wait maybe i will go back with some the highlights just a little bit and up with the blacks to not get too much contrast okay perfect the next step is sharpening i go to the detail section then i pick this thing here the magnify and click on some um really yeah some detailed place in the image somewhere here you can also go up on 100 and there you already see it looks really crisp because of the snow on the trees but i want to do some pre-sharpening and i always do the same it's something in the 40s and the 50s and and uh, at the amount then i will go down with the radius because i don't want it too strong and then i go up with the detail and then i will use this masking function by pressing alt and using the slider so I can um, get the effect out of some parts especially here in the sky the black parts are without the effect and the white parts are with the effect because I want to keep soft textures actually soft something like clouds so here that looks okay and I go in yep nice and crisp and then I will go with some luminance luminance noise reduction because just, just in case there's some noise in the sky left I will remove it a little bit okay that's fine for me the last step is the lens corrections I will always do this at the end because <clears throat> sorry I always do this at the end because it slows down Lightroom when you use it first so now I click on it and there you see yes it removes a lot of distortion uh, you see my informations here i used a nikon 16 to 35 lens it's a good lens but it has a lot of distortions so i like to enable this i also will remove the chromatic aberrations but i don't like the vignetting i want it a bit darker at the edges so i don't want it to remove all of it okay let me try the upright function I always try to level everything in the field but especially with a panorama it's not always easy and i was also kind of in a hurry i was also in a hurry uh, yeah all those okay perfect now i will synchronize all the files and then i will double check because yeah like i said i don't want to oops i don't want to adjust every single one of it uh yeah that's better okay here I marked them already now I'll press sync and I will no sorry I will press sync settings my bad okay now I check the boxes they're all checked that's good then I press synchronize and now Lightroom will work for me and now I can double check I always watch the histogram because it, hap it can happen that some uh, parts will get too bright or too dark let's check uh, that looks still good yeah also fine you have brighter parts here in the sky but it's okay okay also good nice okay i'm really satisfied with that and now i'm actually done with the first chapter i prepared all the raw files for photoshop and in the next video i will show you how i merge them together to a single frame panorama and i will also show you how i make some further um corrections and let's say um some 
perspective adjustments because I never like the the yeah let's say I never like the output Photoshop offers me at the beginning. I always like to make some further tweaks so um, the image looks good again. But that's what I will show you in the next video.